Now then, we're staying in Yorkshire. We're playing about in uh, a snowy wood. Um, Lisa's coming along with me. The idea being today, basically get a fire lit and on the fire we're gonna try and cook something. Uh, so yeah, big learning curve. We'll see how we get on with that. And we're heading down now to meet uh, a mate of mine and um, he's got a lot more skill at this type of stuff than, uh, than myself and uh, I'm hoping that he's going to be teaching Lisa some good knife skills and um, sort of fire lighting techniques, so stay tuned. Right then folks, if you haven't realised, this is Mr Ian Lawrence. Um, we're probably 10 minutes into catching up again, which has been far too long, and both Lisa and I have learnt bucket loads. So we've currently got pockets full of uh got is it acorns no, what? No, no. what are they called fir cones, fir cones, fir cones yeah cones, fir we? cones we've got some uh grass grass that we've picked up and we're just trying to dry it out really and as we're going through we're just going to be well learning more and hopefully get a uh, get a fire lit and um, get a cup of tea on so it's not just uh ian that does stuff out here Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I love stuff like that. And in the background we can hear a, a woodpecker. And there's nobody else here. Just us three. You've got to think of something which is thin, which has got loads of room between it. Because yeah. then it burns, but it also insulates the heat inside and it allows the oxygen to get around the surface of the fuel. You get me? Anything which does that is going to allow you... At least I missed the memo on the, uh, you know, Sorry. camouflage blending clothing. <laughs> I offered to paint her in green, but she was having none of that business. Yeah. So all the way down to core, there's air, oxygen, yeah, and yeah. a very, very thin surface area. So when it, when a flame catches it, or a so spark gets would it... Would you use that for, to actually try and catch the spark no, itself? No, it's secondary again. Secondary, so like yeah, the what, air what you do is you get, Once up. you get your initial spark, and you get your first initial flame, what you want to do is you want to get away from that really thin stuff. Yeah. You want to build it up so that you've got... Uh, a little pile of um, fuel which is all in the heat inside yeah but it's also got the flame on it as well so it's got something to work out plenty of oxygen and loads of surface area right. so from then it can build up and then it'll build up a really small amount of like burning ash so then you can put slightly bigger sticks on so you've got something to chew on because if you put little sticks straight onto the really fine stuff there's a chance it's just going to burn away by the time the bigger sticks get going. Right. So by building this secondary stuff up, it's got something to get its teeth in. Bit more meat to it. That's right, yeah. Did you pick up some acorns earlier, Lace? Yeah. And you keep, you've got them in your pocket just to dry them out? Yeah. Top marks, Ian? I can't Top get marks. these off, though. Top marks! And if you look over there, oh, what are you seeing? Oh, on this immediate bank? Yeah. Well, we've got some uh, like dryish looking grass. So what you want is, you know the really fine feathery stuff? On here? No. Oh, you mean down here? Yeah, yeah. Now you want to look at the stuff underneath. So you've got that there, yeah? Yep. So you want to, oh, no, 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 because what you've done there is not got snow down to the bottom stuff. Right. You get it there and then pull it back and then it leaves you with all this stuff underneath. Because if you just go from top, all that snow's going to fall straight through and wet everything underneath. Okay, I'm going to me. Yeah. Through all these. But they are going to be slightly damp, so then again, you can stick them in your coat. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is damp, but it's not yeah, it's, ringing got, wet. Yeah, you've got to dry it. I said when we first set off, there's, nothing, there's going to be next to nothing out here which is not wet. Because what happened was, we had rain, and then we had freezing weather, and then we had snow. You come round here, have a look. See these on here, really fine edges. Just peel them. These might look like nothing, but this is a really fine stuff. 
that has got your, your uh, fire steel has got more chance of taking to that than it has the bigger stuff that you're going to see down here. See how big that is? It's going to find it harder to get that than it is that, and it looks really pedantic. And you can you got to cup it so the wind don't take it. But these incredibly fine ones, especially in this weather, that you're going to be able to get a spark onto if you're gonna because there's going to be moisture in everything and these need to be dried and because they're so fine and it takes some mess messing about to get them because they're so fine they dry faster yeah so you can see how that little pile in itself is building up pretty quickish and they're tiny but people tend to go for these big lumps down here if you can get one these big lumps and a, a, a fire steel is not going to want to yeah. you know what I mean? Just think about physics I mean, there's more chance of it taking to that than it is to that. All right, so it's literally creating a down effect. All right. So if you want to go and have a go at pulling some of them off? Yep, sir, no problem. Well, then... Yeah. Right, you remember the, the, the wild camp with Nigel where we were uh, in the Trail Star and um, down near Hall's Water and the snow came in and it kept on coming in and what have you and Nigel was using a hexamine uh, block stove um, and for love and the money he was he was trying and trying and he couldn't light it well um, Ian's kindly given us some hints and tips on how to make it easier to light and one of the first things is basically uh, giving it a good old warm up and it? warm it up yeah and I didn't know that until Ian's so we're gonna in, in the background as well as trying to do the other things with like the natural tinder um, I've taken the hexi block from my uh, fire kit, which is something I think I've got from like the Boy Scout era. I think you always like, you know, in like the BCB survival magazines and stuff, you always saw a little tobacco tin and it adds um, like a Vaseline thing in it and a little tea light candle. Um, so hexamine blocks are in there. And uh, yeah, so through the video, we'll, we'll, we'll show you that uh, being lit, obviously in the snow and it's cold. Right, thanks Ian, cheers. Right, so a lot of work's being done. Lisa's been concentrating on uh, getting the the very fine parts off the tree there. Um, I've been doing the same, so we've got a, um, a bag now that's in my pocket drying out. Uh, in the background, Ian's been uh, making this little sort of fire hearth, if you like. And um, you can see there that it's, it's all wet through, as it would be. Um, so we're gonna basically get some timber and uh, make a little sort of wooden floor if you like and then we're going to build from that to get um, a layer between us and that really cold ground the idea behind this fire design is that it comes up in an arched manner so instead of having to build a firewall to bounce the heat back the, the, the wall itself, because I haven't finished with it yet the wall itself will hollow out so the heat will be held inside and bounce it back and then we're going to get these sticks here and we're going to build a floor in there but there's going to be a gap between the floors to make sure the oxygen can get through to feed the fire because if you just put a flat fire straight onto sticks which are packed there's not enough oxygen underneath to be able to feed the fire from underneath that's all we're going to do just build that and a lot of time to save the ground i'll generally find lots of small stones and layer it out in the bottom so you don't burn the ground underneath and damage it yeah okay this is going to be fun. On my camera, I don't think you can see very well because it's quite far away because it's quite a wide handle lens. Right, I don't like using my bushcraft knife for stuff like this, but I'm going to do anyway. This is an Exi block. It's only a small one. It's not military. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to crack this, this knife down onto this piece of wood. So I'm going to find another little piece of wood in here, just there. And we're going to, first of all, the th things with these is sometimes they put like a wax coating on the Exi block to protect the Examine. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so what you first of all, there's some things you can do. You can scrape the exit block onto a surface. As so. And try to get that to take a spark. So they get the shavings to take the spark? Yes. And they put the, the exit block facing it with the shaven face pointing towards it. Right, okay. So once that starts burning, to get that burning, whether it's going to work is a totally different matter. Time will tell. Always more difficult 
in uh, cold weather. Also, remember when you've done with your knife, get your, your sheath back onto it and bang it back round your neck. That way you don't lose it, you don't stab yourself. I'll clean the end of my striker up. Whether this is going to work, I don't know. Now, what happens is, the reason a lot of time it doesn't work when you try uh, lighting an exit block in normal conditions is that you, there's not enough oxygen there to be able to take the spark or the flame. So, there you go, that's burning. And then you can present your exit block up to the flame, and now my exit block's burning. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right, buddy. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Ian. No worries. And that's we a fire steel, so we're a, a lighter yeah. or matches. That's going to work a lot faster. Brilliant. Thank you for that. No worries, mate. Appreciate it. Slower, slower. From top, from right at the top at fire steel. But right, try and work on the steel bit because the rest of it has got. Yeah, carton. Right, okay. Right, okay, stop. Right, what you want to do is place the fire steel right right there and pin it, pin the, the bird nest with it, yeah? Yep. And then slowly. Am I trying to grate the stuff off yeah, first? Yeah, you grate a little bit in. Just be very careful you don't throw all this tinder across. <laughs> no, joking. I, I do not have a delicate touch. Oh, okay. Our lass is covered in bruises. <laughs> um, why are you laughing at that, that's it? Um, Go for it. No, it's going to go happen. for it now. Right, try not to go all, all the way down to the bottom so you're not actually stamping out your, your spark. That was a good one. See how it lasted uh, longer? It nearly went, didn't it? Ne nearly. Slow down, slow down. That's, that's what people do, so I get, start getting anxious. Right, stop. You'll see your bird nest start to come apart. Pack all your bird nest together again. What you've got to remember is that that tinder, it, is, it could save your life in a, in a survival situation. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep that bird nest together, yeah? Okay. So whatever you do, don't let your fire steel go, your, your, your striker go straight into the, into the thing itself. Let the spark go in, not the striker. That's good. You're all excited, aren't you? Yeah. But this might not work because this is damp stuff. But you see, you see that little bit of... It's crying uh, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The heat's going in there. Okay, do you want to stop? Do you want to go? <laughs> Did you enjoy that, Mr. Layout? Yeah. It is a quality fire steel. I, see, my the one that I use is the best that I've got so far, and it's a light my fire one. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that, but that acts in a different way, or maybe it's the way that you've just shown me how to use it. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't know. It's the one that I got with my knife. Well, I got I got part of that. That's it. Yeah, build it all up, and remember to keep the oxygen inside the pile. Right. This is the way we make a cake. Make a cake. Don't go for it. Remember, put your put your fire steel in the ferrocium rod. Which yeah. bit am I going on? The steely on? bit. The steely steel bit, bit. The shiny yeah. bit. Yeah. The shiny bit. Yeah. It's what one strike. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and with that curved right. bit towards no, no, me, all away. Away from me. No, no, other way around. Sorry, sorry, I do apologise. Like that, and then uh, you strike. No, turn your hand around. So, so yeah. So it's like that. Yeah. A uh, right angle to it. Like yeah. that. No, 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 no. you're wrong way around again. That's it, yeah, yeah that's no. it, that's it, that's it. You try and draw it down, that's it. Don't poke it down, draw it down, that's it. Put lots of pressure on. Just keep trying. I think what, what we'll do with you then is we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll have a pop at this and then what we'll do is I'll take you to oh. us. Oh, that's it, we're going, we're going. Again, you see how you're stamping it oh, into oh. the bottom? When the spark goes down, you're stamping your, your spark so out. Start, so don't go so straight yeah. down. That's right, yeah. Don't go all the way to the bottom. It's really awkward when you first do it. 
That's it, that's it. We're learning that quick. Yeah, it's all, it's all about the amount of pressure you put into your, your fire steel. Okay, anyway, just leave it at that then, and I'll have a, I'll stop this. And then I'm going to take a pop at it. Last time it took me ages, it's the weather and such like. When this stuff is in summer and it's really dry, it does crack yeah, up. Yeah. This can take a long time. Steam the fire steel up. You see it's smoking because it's all damp? Yeah, you can yeah. see it, can you? Well, it, it shows that you can do it, and that's what this is about. Brilliant. Brilliant. We're going to have something to eat soon, sweetheart. Is that smoke? Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm going to get this fire created on here. See, that's secondary burn. Now we're getting some of these in. See how they're smoking? Yeah, we'll lift that up. That. Come on, sweet. We just called the fire, sweetheart. Anyone else pick that up? Yeah. Loves nature, this lad. Four quid, ladle. Well done, Mr. Ladle. Job done. Dead and burning. So basically, folks, we, we, the royal we, we all gathered the uh, the fuel to light it, but in the end, it was it was Ian's skill that got it to go. Um, so the fire was up here roaring, but you don't cook on a fire like that. So you wait until it's all died down. Here we go. So that's uh, Lisa and my. Uh, bannock bread Show your beautiful and soup. then in there is uh, your sort of instant noodles ramen noodles if you like um, a tin of uh, sweet corn and uh, peppers isn't it uh, that's uh, we can get straight off the shelf and then we put some uh, savoy cabbage in and one raw onion chopped up so that's what we're going to be eating the idea was to dip the bread in there but as you can see somebody's got a little bit of <laughs> hunger but yeah, um, oh, gonna do this, and um, yeah, th then we're gonna put the fire away safely. Um, make sure we leave everything as we found it, and um, cast asunder. Cast asunder, indeed. Top marks. <laughs> Top marks. Top marks, indeed. That candle looks quite ergonomic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. It is good. Temperatures dropped though, on a serious note. Isn't it? Yeah, it has. Well, we could always crack the fire back up if you want to. No, I don't think there's any need no, to. Yeah. 